suck in my gut. Hello, denizens. Former network executive reaction here, and <laughs> oh boy, get ready for a roller coaster of thoughts and feelings about this Rings of Power show. Have you heard of it? First off, I want to address the people going after the rage tubers in my comments. Your anger is misplaced. Near as I can tell, Amazon is 100% to blame for their handling of this show. Amazon's ineptitude, I think, will make for an excellent cautionary business book. The fact that YouTube's algorithm encourages this is a completely different story. I will be highlighting in a future fascinating and thoroughly engrossing video. Increasingly, we are more entertained by the YouTube gnats that buzz the corpse of these misbegotten shows. Maybe the show creators need to demand AdSense money from YouTube for providing such fodder. It's quite hilarious. If this is the future of entertainment, then so be it. It's not dissimilar to the days when DVD extras were more interesting than the actual featured movie. In fact, I, I pitched a show many years ago called DVD Extras, where we showed only the extras of fake genre movie DVDs. I, I thought it was funny, but no one got the gag in Hollywood. Back to Rings of Power. I was smart and split watching the two shows, episode one last night and the second one this morning. I found myself more charitably disposed to the second show. There will be some spoilers, but I'm not dissecting the two shows scene by scene. Starting off with my former network executive hat on, I have several questions for the creators of this show. Right off the bat, I would have distanced myself from the Tolkien IP, if that wasn't your intent to use it. I would have said, we've licensed characters and locations and we're creating a world inspired by the ideas of Tolkien because trying to duplicate the Jackson movies would have been folly and because you know, we're on a streaming service, the property must be able to expand to fill several years. Thank you. Amazon made a huge mistake in trying to whore the brand and then shit on it. What did they think the reaction would be? YouTubers are not dishonest brokers. Be honest with them. The next thing I would have asked is, where's your damn stars? Lenny Henry is not going to anchor the series. One of the brilliant aspects of Jackson's movies was that it was so much fun to see some of our most favorite actors cosplay in the world that Tolkien, Tolkien created. Ian McKellen, the luminous Kate Blanchett, speaking of Gladriel, and of course Hugo Weaving, Christopher Lee, and the list goes on. Are you telling me with your budget you couldn't hire one recognizable actor? Bean keeps doing these things. One thing I would have asked was, Where's the opening set piece? You do know that the word show is in show business? And I'm not counting that ridiculous ice troll fight where competent elven soldiers were seemingly easily dispensed by the monster, but Galadriel took care of it faster than your dentist pulling a bicuspid. As a side note, this recent trend requiring women leads to go it alone to defeat an adversary rather than lead a cooperative team that might have men in it is tiresome. Prey was another example where I could not fathom for the life of me how the movie would have been worse if it were a collective effort. There is a history of women participating in the bison hunt. Anyway, another digression. My last note would have been that the elves were not very majestic or regal. There didn't seem to be much difference between the humans and the elves and how they were characterized. If you 
mentally detached these two shows from the Tolkien property completely, much like one has to detach strange new worlds from Star Trek original series, then uh, this show so far feels like the typical long-to-get-going streaming fantasy show. With that in mind, it's no worse and probably better than Wheels of Time, well, much better than Wheels of Time and The Witcher. Sorry, start the hate comments now. There were scenes that I liked. There were scenes that were utterly stupid that no person who was into fantasy would ever write because strangely, as much as fantasy is, well, fantasy, it has to be grounded in some physics and science occasionally. Probably why I hated the 3D roller coaster bullshit in Jackson's The Hobbit. And speaking of Jackson, people need to stop talking about Jackson's Lord of the Rings. It's Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, insofar as the characters are concerned. While Jackson played fast and loose with the story, the reason we love these movies is because he managed to transfer to film what was in our mind's eyes from the books. Ralph Bakshi's Hobbit didn't manage to cross that divide. Yes, it took talent and the support of a huge number of dedicated, brilliant staff, but all he did was give us what was there in the books. It turns out that's harder than it seems. As far as a story that has to span a lot of hours, the idea of a character being the only one who believes that Sauron was not defeated and is still at large and wants to go after them is really very good. However, in true Tolkien tradition, I would have picked an unlikely hero. Ironically, Galadriel, I think, was too strong a choice, forcing the character into becoming this disagreeable, bitchy Karen. Unlikely heroes, that's what The Hobbit and L.O.T.R. were about. As far as the performance of the actress playing Galadriel, as a writer, you pray that your cast elevates the shit that you've written and turns it into gold. Unfortunately, it didn't happen in this case. I'll end it there. Let you cogitate on my thoughts. As a bit of Tolkien, it is quite the betrayal. Jackson's The Hobbit was a messy affair, but it did one thing right. It returned me to Middle Earth. These two episodes absolutely did not do that. As a bit of generic streaming service fantasy, it's entertaining enough so far. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you. Bo, bo, bo.